In this Inkscape video, I'll be demonstrating how to make a rusty looking gear like the one shown here. I'll be using Inkscape version 0.48. To start with, I'm going to move this gear out of the way. So I'm going to go over to the star tool and select that. Then up here for corners, I'm going to change this from 5 to 8 and the spoke ratio I'm going to set that to 0 0.4. And now I'm going to press down the control key. And while I'm holding the control key, I'm going to press the left mouse button and I'm going to drag down. And the reason that I'm holding the control key is so that this bottom point on the star is pointing directly down. And then I'll go over here to the selection tool and click on that. And then I want to set the size of this star. And so first I'm going to go over to this little lock here and click that. And that'll make sure that whatever change I make to the width is also applied to the height. So I'm going to set this to 500. And then let me center this star a little bit better. And then next I'm going to go over to the circle tool and click that and then I'll press and hold the control key while I make a circle. And I'm holding the control key so that I get a symmetrical circle. And I'm also going to change the color of this circle. Then I'll click on the selection tool again. And I'm going to change the size of this circle to 300 pixels. And since I have the lock selected here, it'll apply it both to the width and to the height. So I'm going to set this to 300. And then with this circle still selected, I'm going to move it over here a little bit. I'm going to press Control D to duplicate it. I'll move the duplicate over. And I'm going to change the size of this duplicate to 250 pixels. And I'm going to duplicate this one more time, Control D move it over here and I'm going to change this copy to 150 pixels. Okay, and let me move this over here. And the next thing that I'm going to do requires the alignment tools. And so I can go over to the object menu here and go down to align and distribute and that'll open up the dialog box so that I can align things. So I have this box here set to first selected. So all of my alignment is going to be relative to the first item that I select. So I'm going to select this star and then I'm going to hold down the shift key and click on this big circle that I made. And then over here in alignment, I'll click this button right here, which will center these two objects on the vertical axis. And then I'll click this one below it so that I can center these objects on the horizontal axis. And now with both of these selected, I'm going to now go over to the path menu and select intersection. So what this did is wherever the star intersected with the circle, it cut that out and left me with that shape. Now with this shape still selected, I'm going to hold down the shift key and click on this circle right here. And I'm going to go over to the alignment buttons again and center it vertically and then horizontally. And now with these both selected, I'm going to go back up to the path menu and I'm going to select union. And so now it combined both of those shapes into a single shape. And then with this new shape still selected, I'm going to go over to this circle now, press the shift key, click on the circle, and then I'm going to align them with each other again. And now I'm going to go over to the path menu and I'm going to select difference. And that will take the center circle and it'll use that center circle to cut out the middle of this bigger object. And now I have the basic shape of my gear. The next thing I want to do is go over here and I'm going to change it to kind of a dark brown color. 
And now with this shape, I'm going to make a copy of it, which I will be using later. So I'll hit Control D. That will duplicate it. And I'm going to just pull this duplicate out of the way. And now with this original shape here, I'm going to apply some filters to it to give it the appearance of age and make it look like it's got some rust on it. So I'm going to start by going to the Filters menu. And then I'm going to choose Bevels. And then Pressed Steel. And this gives it a 3D appearance that's kind of smooth and shiny. And then I'm going to go up to the Filters menu again. And this time I'm going to choose Distort and Roughen Inside. And now I've got an appearance of age that I've added to it. And then I'm going to go over here to the duplicate that I made. And I'm going to start by changing it to a little bit lighter color of brown. I'll choose this color right here. And then I'm going to shrink this down using this function under the path menu called inset. And what inset does is just make this whole shape thinner. So I'll press it. And I actually want to apply this effect five times. So here's two, three, four, and five. And so the outside diameter of this now is going to be smaller than it was. And this inside diameter will be larger than it was. And now I want to place this image right here on top of my object here on the left. So first I want to make sure that this object right here is going to be on top. So I can go over to this button right here and click it and it'll raise this to the top. And then next I want to select this image here. And then while I hold down the shift key, I'm going to select this image here on the right. And then using the alignment buttons again, I'll center this again vertically and horizontally. And now I want to make sure that only this top object is selected. If I leave both of these objects selected, then the filters that I'm about to apply will be applied to both of these objects. And I only want them applied to this top object. So this step is important. So I'm just going to click anywhere here in the background with the left mouse button. And that will deselect all of the objects. And then next I'll click on this top object. And so now this is the only object that I have selected. And then I'm going to go up to the Filters menu. And I'm going to select Distort and Torn Edges. And this gives this top shape a rough looking edge. And then I'm going to apply one more filter. So I go up to the Filters menu again and select ABCs and Noise Transparency. And this gives me an effect that makes it look like that there's rust on the outside of this gear. So that's how to make a rusty looking gear. The filters in Inkscape are actually pretty powerful and you can do a lot of things with them. If you're interested in learning more about these filters, you can visit my website. I've devoted a section of my website to these filters. You can just go to the web address shown on the screen here. Well, thanks for watching this video, and please subscribe and leave a comment.